Hi, ik ben Dave van de Dave Podcast. Vandaag heb ik Samson Mau en Ben van Hol. Uh, we gaan het eventjes anders doen. We gaan het Engels praten, dus helaas ga ik moeten switchen. Uit Paramaribo, Suriname. Dit is de Dave Podcast met Dave van Aarde. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Great to be here. Yeah, likewise. Finally, we're going to talk about Bitcoin, right? First time on the show, right? Yeah, but not the last time. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Please introduce yourself. All right, my name is Samson. Mm -hmm. I'm the CEO of Jan3. Mm -hmm. um, we work on nation state Bitcoin adoption, and we also are developing a wallet for Latin America called Aqua, which features Bitcoin and USDT. USDT also? Yes, most Bitcoin wallets don't have it. So a lot of people use the shitcoin wallet. So <laughs> we see that as an opportunity to offer it because Tether is uh, issued on the liquid side chain, mm -hmm. which is a Bitcoin side chain. So all of your assets are start, stored either in Bitcoin or in Bitcoin layer two liquid or in liquid USDT. So you can stay pure and Bitcoin, but we, ha we have rails so you can send and receive to the altcoin tether chains. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a way for Bitcoiners to travel through Latin America and just stay Bitcoin only and not have to use uh, altcoin wallet. Okay, but when you transfer, uh, let's say I want to send money to you, which, which um how do you call it? Do you use Tron or? Uh, well, you could ideally use Liquid Tether, Liquid but we tether. can send and receive through Tron Tether uh, also. and Ethereum Tether. Okay, no, because I'm a big fan of USDT because sometimes Bitcoin fluctuates a bit, so I swap. Yes. Um, the goal is to convert most of LATAM from Tron and Ethereum Tether into mm -hmm. Liquid Tether. Okay, Liquid Tether. I'm going to check that one out. Yeah. Please explain to the, because we're speaking about crypto or about Bitcoin, but many people don't even know what Bitcoin is. Yeah. Can you please explain one of you two in very simple terms? <laughs> I should introduce yourself. <laughs> yes, also. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll quickly introduce myself. So uh, I'm Ben. I'm the COO of Gentry. Mm -hmm. I joined about a year ago now because I believe that the mission Gentry has uh, that is talking to nation states, uh, pushing for Bitcoin adoption and also building a wallet for uh, emerging markets is something which is really important. Mm -hmm. And going to Bitcoin then, so Bitcoin is a digital currency. Um, I mean, you, you can look at it in two ways. You can see it as digital gold because it's a limited supply, it's decentralized, um, it cannot be copied. Um, so it has a high store of value. Uh, and that's why people use it um, as digital gold. But it can also be looked at as a means of payment. Um, payment just for daily uh, stuff, but also for remittances um, in a less expensive way and a more decentralized and a more uh, anonymous way, let's say, uh, then you have to go to the banks mm -hmm. for anything. Yeah. I would add for the average person, mm -hmm. you just need to understand that Bitcoin is money. Simply like a gold coin a, a thousand years ago. Yeah, yeah. It it's money. It's yes, it's money is many things, but yes. at the end of the day, like what makes a gold coin valuable? We say it's valuable, right? What makes a dollar bill valuable? We say it's valuable, but we can also say it's not valuable. And this is where you have problems like inflation. But Bitcoin is simply money. You, we use it as money. We can spend it. There are countries that have made Bitcoin legal tender and you can use Bitcoin anywhere in the world. It's just pay for things or store your value in it. I like that explanation. <laughs> Gen3, please uh, tell me a little bit more about it. Yeah, so it's a company I started after leaving Blockstream. So before Gen3, I was at Blockstream. It's a Bitcoin infrastructure company working on Bitcoin mining, uh, Bitcoin protocol development, Lightning, Liquid, and a lot of things. Uh, and before that, I was the COO at BTC China, which was one of the biggest exchanges in the world. So after Mt. Gox imploded, um, everyone started trading on BTC China. It was the biggest exchange for some time. And we were also one of the biggest mining pools too. So uh, BDC China played a role in the block size wars because back then it was the miners and mm -hmm. exchanges trying to say we want bigger blocks. And yeah. we were one of those few that were holding out for small blocks and decentralization. Uh, but yeah, Gen3 is our, our vehicle to orange pill the world. We work with governments. So while I was still at Blockstream, we were working with the government of El Salvador to implement their Bitcoin law. Mm -hmm. And also uh, later I helped them with their digital securities laws. And we've been since engaged with governments everywhere. Um, Switzerland, we've been dealing with politicians, uh, Germany, uh, Mexico, where? 
Colombia soon. Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Basically, any country where there are politicians mm -hmm. or Bitcoiners trying to push forward on nation state level adoption will help and support them in whichever way we can. So, but you can also, you also have like, uh, you already know how to implement this system. I mean, like you have already the, the laws written down and everything. Well, there's different ways, I think, for different countries mm -hmm. to adopt Bitcoin. It's not a simple template. It's like, not a plug-in. Yeah, plug -in not, here's, the, here's the plan. You go A, B, C. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So El Salvador is uh, the first one, mm -hmm. the first country that adopted. But since then, um, Prospera, a special economic zone in Honduras, has made Bitcoin legal tender as well. Uh, in Switzerland, the uh, Canton Ticino mm -hmm. and the city of Lugano have made uh, Bitcoin basically de facto legal tender because there's no capital gains tax in Switzerland. So you can just spend Bitcoin and the government accepts it to pay taxes and all municipal services. Um, where else? Is, in, in, sorry, but in El Salvador, do they, ta do they pay taxes on the Bitcoins when no. they use it? No. It's just money. Okay, okay. No, but the thing is because of the anonymity of it, you know, it might be a problem. Is that I the problem that for governments? They're... Because usually when, when you have a million dollars in the bank, the government can get to know about it. But with Bitcoins, it's a different story. Right. That's a, a good point, Dave. So I would say their focus is first making Bitcoin money, mm -hmm. um, just like the US dollar yes. or anything like that, because they're looking for growth and prosperity first. I don't think they have the luxury to say, you know, where did your Bitcoin come from? Um, they're more interested in drawing tourism and economic growth. And since they've done the Bitcoin law, they've seen double digit GDP growth. They've seen a 30% boost in tourism. Um, they've seen a massive amount of investment over a billion dollars, I would say. And their, their, their traditional old bonds have gone from a triple C rating to B. Um, this is El Salvador. This is El Salvador. So, so this could be implemented here because we need something right now at the moment. We need solutions. And our production has not gone up, so we need different ways yeah. to solve this problem. This could be a way forward for Suriname to adopt Bitcoin in some capacity. Mm -hmm. And Ben has had some ideas, and we've been talking with the central bank here. Uh, maybe you can go into our proposal. Yeah, sure. Uh, so the situation for Suriname is a little bit different mm -hmm. uh, than El Salvador, because Suriname still has their own currency. Mm -hmm. El Salvador didn't have a currency. They had the US dollar as their main currency. But the Suriname currency is, um, um, is suffering high inflation at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, now, on one hand, you could say, well, let, let's just cancel our own currency and go to Bitcoin. But obviously, that would bring a lot of problems. That would bring problems for the people in the, in the country. That would bring problems for the IMF. They wouldn't want that. Mm -hmm. So you need to think about a solution that is acceptable for all parties and that can help everyone. Mm -hmm. um, so the main idea that we have now is that Suriname, uh, they would just maybe buy a small portion uh, of their treasury into Bitcoin, mm -hmm. showing their commitment to Bitcoin, but also strengthening their own, val their own oh, currency. Yeah, because then it's Bitcoin backed instead of gold Yeah, well, it's actually, no. it's like backed by gold, yes. but backed by Bitcoin. Yeah, digital gold. They're yeah. improving yeah. their reserves. I wouldn't say it's backed yeah. by Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, uh, that would actually help the people because the currency would, inflation would be stopped, mm -hmm. or at least uh, there would be less inflation. Um, maybe it would even appreciate in the future. Uh, okay. So pe the people will benefit, the government will benefit also because with a stronger currency, they will attract new uh, investments in the country. Uh, so it all, it all goes together. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm li I like what I'm hearing because uh, not long ago, there was this tourist who came to, who wanted to come to Suriname. And uh, he, he came through Guyana and he wasn't able to use his credit cards yeah. or, or, or visa cards. I that, couldn't use mine. Yeah, that's what I'm, so you're experiencing it, it yeah. at the moment. Yep. So, and, and I think that's a big bottleneck for our economy also because uh, in, in, in most countries, they only pay with plastic plastic mm -hmm. these days. Yep. So, uh, because when I went to Holland, I had cash and they're like, yeah, I haven't seen this in a, in a while. So yep. I think that that so, will that, also that, be a big boost for tourism. Yeah, sure. And that could be a second way of adopting Bitcoin, not only putting Bitcoin into their treasury, but they could also make Bitcoin a legal payment. Maybe yeah. not legal tender. Yes. It doesn't need to be a currency, but um, just, like, just make it legal, allow yes. it. Yes. Um, and also uh, make some regulation for businesses that if they deal with Bitcoin, that 
they're covered. I mean, they know that they're allowed to do it. Their investment is not uh, wasted. Um, so a little bit of regulation, not too much probably, mm -hmm. um, but that would help a lot. Yeah, actually there is a um, precedent for this. Mm -hmm. So right now in Suriname, if you go somewhere, the, they're charging, they'll take US dollars. Yes. Uh, we haven't used euros, but we've done US dollars. But there are two executive orders, Executive Order 216 and 219, which permitted you to use euros and dollars. Mm -hmm. So you can simply do the same executive order, and that would be under the financial committee here. And it can be, from what we've been discussing with the lawyer, it can be done really quickly if they decide to do so. And so it can be an easy fix? Yeah, well, you just do Bitcoin just like you do dollars. Yes, and this is possible because uh, Bitcoin is already a currency in El Salvador. Mm -hmm. So you can treat it as a foreign currency. So how, who do we need to talk to and, and convince that we can at least try it? Because at the moment, we're not really, nothing's really happening in our economy. We were waiting for the FID for the oil and gas uh, industry, but mm -hmm. it's going to take a while. And this can be implemented real fast. Well, we've been talking with uh, Minister Albert Ramden. Mm -hmm. He's a smart uh, guy. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's a very smart guy. He's very forward thinking and he's very keen that Suriname does something. I think most people here understand something has to happen mm -hmm. and we hope this is that something. We've also met with the central bank. Um, they're open to forming a working group and sending two of their people and involving us as well so we could advise them on that treasury strategy that Ben des developed. But uh, we're still working our way through and figuring out um, which are the right people to meet. We're hopefully we'll meet with the treasury committee, uh, financial Tr services committee as well. But it doesn't seem like it's an impossibility because Bitcoin is a foreign currency. So El Salvador kind of gives Suriname this ability to do the same thing they did with US dollars and Euro. Do you think it's an idea to bring a delegation to El Salvador so they can experience it uh, firsthand? Definitely. There's a lot of places you can go and experience it, not just El Salvador, but Bitcoin jungle in Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. And again, Bitcoin adoption is largely born out of necessity. So in Costa Rica, foreigners cannot get a bank account. No. So what happened was in this little community called Bitcoin Jungle or Uvita, they started setting up merchants to accept Bitcoin. And now they've got the beginning of a circular economy. So now the merchants are paying other merchants, suppliers or marketplace tables to sell their goods. So you have this little microcosm of Bitcoin adoption, but you can also go to Lugano in Switzerland and pay for things in hundreds of stores in Tether and in Bitcoin. Yeah, the thing is, uh, most countries, because I travel a lot, uh, I'm, been, I'm fortunate enough to travel a lot, and uh, everywhere you see big uh, billboards, you know, like, buy your Bitcoins here, mm -hmm. Bitcoins uh, are accepted here, so actually, we're, it's nothing new, and I think the, the, the minister you met, Mr. Ramdin, he travels a lot also mm -hmm. for work, so I think uh, it's not new to him also, yeah. so I think you should really call him on a daily basis. <laughs> everything explain to him how important it is. Everything you need to implement it is available in the world. Mm -hmm. You just need to get it here. And to get it here, you need people interested enough, willing to come here and to set up a business, mm -hmm. to implement it. And that requires just the commitment from the government. Mm -hmm. Saying something like, we want to do something in Bitcoin because we want to advance our country. We want to be at the front end of what's happening in uh, the digital world. Uh, Please uh, repeat that what the government needs to say so they, they know what. <laughs> so well, I mean, all they need to, to say be honest, is... To be honest, I don't think they need to do a lot. Mm -hmm. They probably need to do some regulation. They also need to, uh, need to make it clear yeah, that that's... they are supporting uh, this new technology, mm -hmm. that they want to be at the front of what's happening um, in Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And then I'm sure that then it's up to the private sector and to other investors to come here, but they will come at that point mm -hmm. because then they know that there is a market for them that they can work on and all those products are available. There's a reason I asked you to repeat it because I understood you the first time, but I think it's very important that they know that it's not rocket science. At the no, moment. absolutely not. And there's really nothing to lose. If you say we, we want to adopt Bitcoin in Suriname, you know, but what, there what, is what, a... what bad thing could happen? But the thing is, uh, it's it's... How do you, how should I put it? A bit on the down low, <laughs> the way I can explain it, is that uh, they, you have many miners here, you have many mm -hmm. people who already accept cryptocurrency. They put it on their um, Facebook walls and whatever that mm -hmm. they accept crypto. So yeah. it's, it's, a, it's 
the it's government gonna, who needs to wake up then. Right. It, it's going to come anyway. Yes. They can't stop it. It's here already. They can only they can benefit from being one of the first to do it. Yes. And if they don't do it, then it will come anyway, but it'll come later mm -hmm. and they will not benefit as much. Mm -hmm. And if they do it now, it's much better for them. But from my understanding, there is already government approval for a three megawatt mining site. I, I forgot the location, but that is approved by the government. So they're already welcoming mining to come here, Bitcoin mining. So why not just say we want to adopt Bitcoin as a country? There's steps that can be taken, which we've outlined. They can pass an executive order. They can buy some Bitcoin in their treasury to stimulate inflation. And they're already mining. They're already endorsing mining. And there are more mining opportunities because Suriname is an energy rich country. There's probably gigawatts of hydro potential mm -hmm. and that can be tapped. There's also a, a community uh, initiative to build a, a small Bitcoin based economy with solar and hydro turbines. Do in the interior. Okay. Yep. Yeah. What was the name of that one? <laughs> I don't remember the name. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long name. Oh, it is? Kwamala Samutu. Yeah, yes. Oh, that's, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. way... <laughs> yeah, it's far. Yeah. So we <laughs> met with the uh, Amazon conservation, conservation team. Uh, we met with other people involved mm -hmm. in that project doing the solar panels. Mm -hmm. And there's a big potential there to actually start this uh, movement towards financial mm -hmm. inclusion. Because how do you implement financial inclusion? The problem is people cannot get bank accounts. And there's no way the banks will onboard everyone. People may not have IDs or passports or fixed addresses. So how do you do that? The only way to bring about financial inclusion is with Bitcoin because there's no barrier. You get a phone, you get a wallet, yeah. and you're done. So your wallet, what's it called again? Aqua? Aqua. And how can I obtain Aqua? Is it, is it, uh... It's launching officially next year on January 3rd, mm -hmm. but we'll be releasing it into beta in the next few weeks, and we'd be happy to give you a beta access. So Aqua. What type of wallet is it? Wallet is it? Is, can I compare it to Coinbase wallet or MetaMask? Right. Or? So th there's nothing like it on the market right now. Mm -hmm. It's a non-custodial Bitcoin wallet, so we cannot help you recover your funds if you lose your, fu you lose your funds. So you it's a bit of de decentralized? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you, you can't really compare it to anything. Maybe the closest thing is to a Lightning wallet, uh, yeah. except for we have uh, Tether in it as well. Mm -hmm. so this is what we we're talking about earlier. There is no Bitcoin wallet that is heavily integrated with Tether, but we have native Tether support. So if you're an Argentinian and you want to receive liquid Tether, you simply get it from your friend, but then you don't need to get liquid Bitcoin, which is the, the gas paying mm -hmm. mechanism for liquid. You don't need liquid Bitcoin. You can pay for the gas fees of the liquid chain with USDT without, so, uh, without any gas. Okay. Finally. So you would just be able to send, <laughs> receive USDT and then send it onwards. That's a big problem what I have with my Ethereum wallet. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have gas, then you need to buy Ethereum and then you yes. use so much. But that's why they want you to buy Ethereum. We, we want you to just get the USDT because you are aware of it. People in LATAM, they, they know of USDT. For them, it's an inflation hedge. It's actually like gold to them okay. compared to the Argentinian peso. So when I send a Bitcoin to you, I have to pay now the Bitcoin is worth a lot. I think that the fees are pretty high compared to Tron. Is that, uh, what are the fees when you do the transfer with your wallet? Right, so, okay. so Aqua has three sections. We mark one of them as your savings account, and mm -hmm. that's Bitcoin on chain. Then we have your spending accounts. The first one is layer two of Bitcoin. So this is liquid and lightning. Mm -hmm. So it can send on the liquid side chain and the fees are about eight cents right now or you can send it over Lightning, and then the fees are also similar. Is it a fixed fee? It's a variable fee, but the fees are quite low. Okay. And then you have Tether, also a spending wallet, mm -hmm. and the fees on Liquid are, again, about eight cents. So this is really designed for the average person to use. It's not your savings wallet. I think you can get a hardware wallet like a cold card or a Jade or mm -hmm. something, or a Bitbox, but this is mainly for you to use in your day-to-day -day life. So you can have Bitcoin on chain if someone really wants to send you an on chain payment, but then I think it's better you would move it to a cold storage solution afterwards, but it's mainly to use a spending account and the tether account. Many people come with certain ideas to my country and then they're going to, for example, the oil and gas, and then they say, yes, our economy is going to have a big boost and whatever, but I never get the feeling that my people like the poor people, like, like the common people will benefit from it. Mm -hmm. The only thing that a, a few will benefit, and of course it will trickle down, but not as much. Mm -hmm. How can my people benefit from you guys, like what you want to implement from the Bitcoin acceptance? I think with Bitcoin, 
It's all about self-sovereignty, about taking care of your own future. So saving your money in something hard, a hard asset, and being in control of that asset, self-custody. So having your Bitcoin yourself, not on a Coinbase wallet that Coinbase controls and can lock you out and freeze your account. Because <laughs> that's PayPal. You have that already. Mm -hmm. But with Bitcoin, you have your Bitcoin in your wallet. It's self-custodial. It's your own. And you're investing in your future. So I guess the key way that people can help themselves is start buying Bitcoin. And you don't need to buy one whole Bitcoin at 37,000. You can buy a fraction of a Bitcoin, but just start saving as much as you can in Bitcoin today because Bitcoin is a rapidly appreciating asset class. And this is an asset class that anybody on the planet can access. So if in the 1980s you wanted to invest in Apple, but you live in a village in Suriname, how do you do that? You're not you getting buy it. You can't buy it. No. If, and you need also yeah. somebody who was registered exactly through a how do you bro, a stock broker exactly yeah or let's say you want to buy Manhattan real estate because it's mm. hot and it's going up you can't do that first of all it's not you can't buy a fraction of a, a building in Manhattan right yeah. and second you live in Suriname mm. you can't do it but if you're in Suriname if you're in Lebanon if you're in Argentina you can buy Bitcoin. You can buy the same Bitcoin that the Americans are buying in their ETFs. You can buy the same Bitcoin that the billionaire Michael Saylor is buying or Ray Dalio is buying. Mm. This is an unprecedented change in human history. When, can, when has it ever been possible that the, the poorest of the poor, the unbanked, can access the same asset the richest on the planet can access? And this is the key message. If you want to fix something, you have to do it yourself. So buy Bitcoin. And yeah, then, because if, even if you want to buy $50 worth of Bitcoin, it's possible. Yeah. People think that they need to buy all whole Bitcoin. Exactly. I'm explaining it uh, to the people also because yeah. uh, they say, yeah, it's too expensive. I'm like, no. Nah. Yeah. And it, it has, okay, it's been fluctuating a bit because of now we're in a bear. No, it's getting bullish it's now. Getting, it, it was bearish for a while. Right. Yeah, but now it's getting bullish again, yeah. finally. But the first step is to help yourself and then... Maybe the, the oil rigs will have some trickle-down effect later, but you cannot just wait for that to happen. That's no. five years out. And there are some talks of uh, ways to uh, tokenize shares of Sassoli mm -hmm. and distribute that to the people. Uh, we've heard that several times from the government. That's something we could help them to do, to tokenize those assets on the liquid sidechain. Mm -hmm. And similar to the El Salvador bond, it would be issued on a liquid sidechain. People could get those shares in their wallet and receive dividends to their wallet too in Tether or in Bitcoin. But that's something that is further away. But today, you can help yourself by buying Bitcoin. Is it an idea to maybe make a stable coin in SRD for the SRD? Or I, you, I don't would you rather point. use uh, Tether? I think it's better to, I, it's better to just use what is dominant, and that's Tether right Okay, now. okay, okay, okay. Maybe because, maybe because of, you know, sometimes you have some nationalists that want their own stable coin, so. Every um, currency is trending to zero against the U.S. dollar, which is trending to zero against Bitcoin. So at least hitch your wagon onto the, <laughs> the boat that's higher. How, how long did it take for El Salvador? For how long did it take before the people started to notice the, the benefits? It's, it's still going on. No, but, but it, it's after for, implementing. Yeah, well, it's busy for two years now. Mm -hmm. uh, but you need a lot of education. Um, so you see more and more adoption every day, mm -hmm. um, but you also have children being taught about Bitcoin at school. Um, oh, that's good. Yeah, I mean, th this is a continuous work and within 10 years from now, they will be far ahead. Um, but already today, people are benefiting from it. So within two years, you already can see the difference. Yeah, absolutely. But th there's no guarantee. So after mm -hmm. El Salvador bought into Bitcoin, it went down and a lot of people criticized yeah, Because the there were riots, I think, also in the beginning, after the, bear, the, the bull market was done. Well, the Bitcoin did crash because of yeah. FTX. Yeah, um, precisely. But, uh, I mean, Bitcoin does go up and down, and now it's back again. But gold but, is similar. Yeah, but gold is... It doesn't is, crash as hard, but yeah, still, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's not true. stable. But I think you have to be willing to bear the brunt of it. So they took a, a lot of heat for Bitcoin adoption because unfortunately it went down after they adopted it. So then they had critiques from the IMF saying you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do Bitcoin bonds, um, you know, roll it back and undo everything you did. But they powered through and now they're back. So you have to be willing to take the, the bad with the good. You said IMF um, because actually Bitcoin is the biggest competitor uh, against the banking world at the moment. 
uh, it can be a, how do you call it? Um, not, most banks are not happy with Bitcoin, nicely said. I'm not sure that's the case. <laughs> We're seeing banks in Europe offering yeah. Bitcoin now. Oh, what's IMF's standpoint on Bitcoin at the moment? It's hard to say, but when El Salvador first came out and when El Salvador announced Bitcoin bonds, mm -hmm. the IMF was highly critical Precisely. Uh, and very aggressive. Mm -hmm. But I think they can't say anything now because it's proven to be the right move and El Salvador is booming. So they can't really keep saying you did the wrong thing when obviously the facts say you did the right thing. And I think they also need to contend with Argentina because you have a, a very libertarian president there that is going to in implement a lot of changes and I think they could probably be an adopter of Bitcoin too. So IMF can't fight everyone at the same time and the proposals that we're bringing are very conservative. Uh, just 1% of treasury and recognize Bitcoin as foreign currency. You're not implementing some new law that would rock the boat with the IMF. Th that's why I'm asking because at the moment we have to pay the IMF a lot of money so maybe they yes. decide what happens well, here. Well, it depends what the IMF is really after. Do they want you to pay back or do they want you to be continuously in debt? If hmm. they want you to pay if back... You want my opinion. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> if they want you to pay back, they should be welcoming yeah. strategies to incentivize economic growth and development in Suriname. They should be welcoming of Bitcoin mining because you can mine and pay them back. But if they want you to be in debt to them forever, <laughs> They would say, don't do anything with Bitcoin, just borrow more money from us, and we have some suggestions for your country. But that's not a sovereign nation at that point. True, but it tends to look like they want you to stay in debt. Oh, well, yeah, yes. It tends to look like that. Yes. <laughs> I'm very, it's very, also, very I mean, careful. It's huh? clear that. Um, Money is a tool of control. Precisely. And they want to be in control. Let's mm -hmm. just put it this way. But on the other hand, El Salvador also has proven, even before implementing Bitcoin, that you can actually, you can actually run a country without having your own currency and without having that control. Mm -hmm. So maybe governments should learn to let it go a little bit and not wanting their own currency per definition. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, I'm totally up for Bitcoin, so you don't have to convince me. But how do we bring this knowledge to the people? Because we've been speaking about Bitcoin because we all, we all know a little bit about it at least. That's your job. And then, <laughs> would you have any suggestions how to uh, bring it out, get it out there a, a lot more? I think there's a lot of things happening already. Mm -hmm. There are groups working on merchant payment solutions. Um, there is mining happening already. There's the project in that village and setting up a Bitcoin economy there and we are working with the government to educate them and the central bank and then you're working on educating the people. So it's a multifaceted approach and I think as you start going down the Bitcoin cycle mm -hmm. more things will happen, more groups will come in, uh, you might have the education program come in, Me Premier Bitcoin and they could start Bitcoin programs in the schools here to teach the children about Bitcoin. So, But let's say somebody who has never heard about Bitcoin, what would you recommend they do? What's the first step? Buy a little bit of Bitcoin. No, on. but before they buy, they need to know what they're buying. Yeah. Do you? Usually, yes. You can buy a few dollars worth and just see it <laughs> on your phone. No, and but then I mean, send it if, to your friend. What I'm trying to say is that a lot of people don't even know what Bitcoin, in essence, is. You know but what most I mean? people also don't really know how money works. Yeah. They just have it in their bank account and they trust, but they don't really know how it is working behind the scenes. Yeah. Do they know what fractional reserve is? Do they know that the money in the bank is not really there? It's lent out. Do they know rehabilitation? They so, <laughs> I don't really think that everyone yeah, in the world... Because everybody makes a run to the bank, the bank goes bust immediately. Because exactly. you don't have, sure. You don't even have it. Sure, they don't even can... have your money. No, 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 no. Yeah. So we, we met a, a guy here in Suriname and he was asking us a lot of questions. Like, do I need an account? Mm -hmm. to get Bitcoin, right? And we said, no, just download a wallet from the App Store. And then Ben sent him $5 over Lightning. And he got it in his wallet. He said, wow, this is in my, my phone. Yeah. And yeah, we said, yeah, that's exactly what it is. And you can now send it to someone else. It's that easy. Uh, sometimes when you, when you do transactions, the, how do you call it, the network gets uh, 
overloads. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do mm -hmm. you also have that with your wallet? Because sometimes yeah. it took three, three or four days before you would get your Ethereum or your Bitcoin. And uh, you don't want Ethereum. But, no, uh, no, I'm just yeah. giving an example. Yeah, so we have our Bitcoin Layer 2 wallet, which is Lightning and Liquid. Mm -hmm. So these, the way we've developed it, you should not have any bottlenecks or congestion. It'll just work behind congestion, the Congestion, that's, that's the word yes. I was looking for. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we are aware of the issues. That's why we built this wallet in this way we structured it. So you can get liquid Bitcoin on mm -hmm. the side chain or lightning Bitcoin, and you won't have to pay the high fees or deal with that congestion. And what's the, how long does the transaction take? Like one uh, minute? Two minutes, five. Liqu liquid transactions are final in two minutes. Mm -hmm. um, lightning, in seconds. Instance. Yeah. So let's say you're in Japan and I need to send you money from Suriname. Mm -hmm. Two seconds. Yes. I'm going to repeat it for the people because here, if I want to buy, let's say, a container worth, uh, 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 filled with refrigerators, mm -hmm. before I can send the money, it takes at least a week to 10 days because I have to fill in X amount of forms the bank asked me 20 questions every minute mm -hmm. about my own money. Yeah. Is it your own <laughs> money if the bank has to ask you what you're doing with it? That's, yeah. No, it's not, actually. You but have to pay them to put the money in your account. Then you have to beg them to mm -hmm. get it out of the account. Mm -hmm. Then you have to prove what you're going to use it for. And if they don't, uh, if they say, if, if, if they think it's a BS story in my words, they don't even uh, allow it, the transaction. But or if you live in Canada and they say you're a terrorist, then they'll freeze your account for precisely. a peaceful protest. Yes, like the truckers. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and actually the same goes for remittances. Mm -hmm. Money, in, in, in the case of Suriname, money coming from the Netherlands, for instance, yes. being sent here. I mean, how much do you pay in uh, transaction fees and how long does it take? With Bitcoin or even with liquid US dollar, it's instant. And it's a fraction of the cost. Mm -hmm. So people can send money from the Netherlands to Suriname instantly almost and at very low cost. Before we started, I told you that Suriname is a cash-based economy. Mm -hmm. How do we solve that problem? Because uh, there's more cash on the streets than money in the bank. So uh, let's say people want to buy Bitcoin and they have cash dollars or euros. How can they still buy Tether or whatever? Do you have a solution for that? One could be to use ATMs, mm -hmm. ATMs that are converted to accept Bitcoin or to uh, get Bitcoin. The Bitcoin ATM. Mm -hmm. So uh, you yeah. can, yeah, 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 you can yeah. have like a regular ATM, mm -hmm. which also has a Bitcoin function. Mm -hmm. So you send Bitcoin to that ATM, mm -hmm. and then cash comes out, and you can go to the shop with the cash. No. Or I the, mean, other, way the other way around. The other way around. You yes. put cash in the ATM, mm -hmm. and then it will show you a, a QR code. Mm -hmm. You can scan that and it will send the Bitcoin mm -hmm. to your wallet. But it's a business opportunity for local people or yes, that's why somebody. Asking. But there should be a market mm -hmm. and you should be able to put your cash into the ATMs and, and get Bitcoin from it. Yeah, because I think in Holland there's a cap for 1,500 euros max on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. That's possible, yes. Yes, uh, but, but if you need larger amounts, how, how, how would you solve that? There should be OTC businesses in, in the country too. So those would take cash and Give you Bitcoin. No, but the problem what we have here is that if you want to put that cash in the bank, the bank will not accept it. Mm. So that's why that, that's a big bottleneck here because everybody here by law is uh, allowed to have a bank account or a bank account is mandatory. But I think 90% can't even open one mm -hmm. because of all the questions they, they get asked and all the BS. <laughs> the, the, the red tape here is no joke. Right. But probably over time, more and more of that cash will go into digital dollars, mm -hmm. USDT. And I think the amount of cash will go down over time. Mm -hmm. And people will just hold it because having USDT in your wallet is probably as good as having it in cash. Yeah. I don't see why people would still use cash if they can use it in USDT in their wallet. No, I think everybody would, 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 would uh, convert into USDT if possible because, like I said, I've, I've been, I, I know about cryptocurrency for at least mm -hmm. eight years now, uh, actively, and um, mo a lot of people, especially businessmen, especially the Chinese community, they know the benefits, mm -hmm. but it's just hard for them to get a hold of it, so at the moment there's even... Uh, uh, some people who sell tether for extra percentages. A premium. Yes. Mm. 
That's interesting. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, two or three percent extra mm -hmm. just to uh, do the transfer. But mm -hmm. if you go to a certain amounts, you cannot uh, supply them because you also need to put, be able to put your money in the bank to sure. mm -hmm. restock your uh, tether. Well, I don't. I, I don't have a solution for that. But I think as the economy grows, mm -hmm. it'll absorb all the mm -hmm. excess cash that you're talking about. Probably. Yeah, because there's no. Most people don't trust the banks. Mm -hmm. What What we've had in the past is that uh, all of a sudden they tell you um, the cap for this for, from now on is you can take no more than two thousand dollars a week for businesses, or sometimes a thousand dollars. Yeah. A business is allowed only. Uh, people are only allowed to put six hundred euros a month in the bank. I'm just. Mm -hmm. The numbers are not exact, but yeah. it's, not, it's, it's a lot of money for a normal person. But if you do business, you can't, you can't do anything. Yeah. Especially for the Chinese community that imports a lot from China. Yeah. You know, and yep. uh, they receive cash. Mm -hmm. And what you also have now that we were almost blacklisted and many credit cards from Suriname are not even accepted internationally. So I think this is a very good opportunity. Mm -hmm. Because, I, like I said, I know that the Chinese community here is al already using uh, crypto, especially uh, the stable coin called Tether, mm -hmm. for the people who don't know about it. Because we've talked, we've, maybe we need to explain Tether also. Yeah. <laughs> well, Tether is actually a digitized version of the dollar, the US dollar, but it's run by a private company. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's centralized compared to Bitcoin, which is decentralized. Uh, and it can run over different blockchains. So they can, you can have it on Ethereum, you can have it on Tron, but also on Liquid, which is the version that we are using. But it's all the same. It's all digital dollars backed by real dollars in the bank or, uh, I mean, dollars or just paper uh, in the bank. Mm -hmm. It's dollars on a blockchain. Yeah, but sometimes yeah. there's a lot of FUD about USDT that mm -hmm. it's going to crash, that there's too many USDT at the moment in the market. Is it safe? I think so. I mean, there's been constant FUD about the... So the situation is really funny. There's constantly been FUD since Tether was created. Yes. Since uh, 2014, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 2014 until today. There's con a constant stream of FUD. But the people spreading that FUD has never been, have never been right. They've missed FTX. Mm -hmm. They've missed Celsius. They've missed every single thing that blew up yeah. in the, everyone's faces. So honestly, I think it's just people are paid to spread misinformation, potentially by their competitors, to attack them. Yeah, because you also have USDC, right? Yeah. But I, I got a message from Binance that they're not working with USDC anymore. Do you know why that is? I'm not sure, but um, USDC is really only used by Americans in the US, and they don't even really need to use it because they have banking. So I'm not really sure what market they serve, but in our travels in LATAM and around mm -hmm. the world, we barely see anybody using it, much less knowing about it. So in, in Turkey, I met a guy doing OTC trades and I asked him, what do you take? Do you take USDT or USDC? And he asked me, what is USDC? Uh, so I think their market is really the US. Maybe that's also what, maybe that's why Binance doesn't want to touch it. Yeah, because Binance got a fine, a fine of $4 billion, I heard uh, yeah. this week. Yeah. So the thing is also with, the, with, with this market is that you, You've had a lot of people who tried to, you've had a lot of Ponzi schemes. You've had a lot of people that um, stole a lot of money, especially the FTX guy. I don't know how much, how many billion did he steal? Eight, ten, probably like ten. That. Yeah, we're probably gonna lock him up billion. for life. He's, he's, I think his Ponzi was bigger than Mad Madoff's. Yeah. <laughs> so they were flying in pizzas with private jets, I heard, to the Bahamas, all those crazy things. But uh, how, that's, is that the reason why you only stick to Bitcoin? Generally, yes. I mean, everything else is a company pretending to be decentralized. They're riding on the coattails of Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So having run an exchange myself back in the day, in 2015, 16, you know, every coin or project would come and make their presentation about why they're really good and why we should list them. That's not decentralized, right? That's some guy with a project trying to make a quick buck. Even Ethereum came to our office and said... Vitalik. Yeah, Vitalik. Yeah. He came and they made a presentation and talked to all about Ethereum. And back then, he was just one of many guys. There's lots of guys just like him. He just managed to... Become get, the second biggest, I think. You, I think. For now, for now. But <laughs> all of these things die over time. If you look at the Ethereum to BTC ratio, mm -hmm. they are dropping constantly. They, they, 
really can only keep their price afloat by announcing new things that they're doing. And I think they're running out of things to do now. And staking is not doing them any, any good. Hmm. Thanks for the tip. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> uh, what is your impression of Sunam ever since you guys have been here? Well, first of all, it's a beautiful country. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had the pleasure to, uh, to go at places where you would probably never go uh, just being here on my own as a tourist. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was thanks to Maya who uh, brought us here. Um, yeah, I only great. Sorry? Maya's great. Yeah. I mean, she did a lot. Uh, she helped us a lot uh, uh, during these days. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, we also see that it would be beneficial for the country to do something. Mm -hmm. That's also something we can see uh, coming here. Yeah. Um, and the inflation is very real. Ben yeah. was telling me he was talking to someone driving him, um, saying the price of bread went from, from 15 to 50. Yeah, 15 yeah. to 50. So there are real problems here mm. for the people. And, and I think getting bigger. that has to yeah. be addressed. Um, when you have high inflation like that, it's a recipe for social unrest. So there has to be something done eventually. Otherwise, it's a problem. Yeah. Do you think that you need to come here more often, maybe to have more talks, or do you think in this visit you've reached? get more flights in <laughs> and then we'll we'll talk? <laughs> it's really hard to get here. So I I was supposed to go to I'm going to Colombia after this, uh -huh. and the people there asked me to come one day earlier, and I had uh, my team check for the flights, and it was impossible to go on the same day and arrive earlier. Yeah. It, for all intents and purposes, I could be on another planet right now. Yeah. There was no way to get to Colombia one day earlier. Did you try Copa? I, we looked at everything. I think yesterday we talked to a pilot who suggested going to Aruba and then jumping from there. But it's not easy to get here and, or leave. Logistics is one of our biggest bottlenecks, to be honest. Mm -hmm. That's because, especially Americans, they feel like they, they need to be able to leave the country at any moment. I don't know, there's something that's in their system. I think it's going to be mandatory also when the oil and gas really starts to pop yeah. off is that there has to be a, a daily flight. But he least. said it's very easy to get here from Holland. From Amsterdam it's quite easy. I mean, yeah, there yeah. is a daily flight. Yes. Same time every day. Um, you can so fly to Holland and go to Colombia. It would take you 25 hours. <laughs> that might be <laughs> faster, actually. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, okay. Is there something that you want to add like, that the people should really know? Well, I think it's an opportunity. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, so either they take it, I believe, or not. Mm -hmm. But this is something unique. This is something where Latin America can benefit, um, whereas Europe and the US are not really benefiting. And normally, it's the other way around. Precisely. So um, I would just recommend the government and also the people interested to study it to learn about it, um, because it's only by understanding what Bitcoin is that you will probably start implementing it, mm -hmm. private and as a government. Do you have a website maybe that they can check out? We with, have the explanation of what you, what, what you want to do? We have our company website. Mm -hmm. um, Gen3.com. But also some, does it also have some educational pages? Oh, or? There's lots of websites yeah. available on the internet. There's yeah. so much content now. I yeah. know, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm yeah. Just, maybe you, yeah. can, you, can, you can give them hints because I don't want to be the one to tell them, go to this website yeah. or that website. I, but I think the best content would be content created here, locally for the people here. Yeah. I mean, that will speak to their language and speak to their concerns and be able to approach it from a local perspective. Uh, but, I mean, you could probably find lots of materials in Dutch, but I think community is very important for Bitcoin. We see community driving all of the adoption. So we engage with the governments at the top level, but it's those grassroots initiatives. Bitcoin Beach, Bitcoin Jungle, Bitcoin Ekasi, all of these little local initiatives are what ground it and educate the people. Hmm. We just educate the, the government. Thanks and I hear it. there's also a Bitcoin conference coming up here in Suriname. It's a very good tip, local so. content. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, because I've seen, uh, I used to be a big fan of uh, MM Crypto, but he went a little bit too loopy for, mm -hmm. <laughs> for me, but still, he educated me a lot in the beginning. Um, but now you see, and I have a feeling, I'm not going to say it, I don't know for certain, but I have a feeling that certain companies now pay them to, to push certain tokens 
you know so uh, but in the beginning it wasn't like that mm -hmm. uh, but local content is very important I think to educate yeah. the people local content and local community yeah because actually what is money is when we decided this piece of paper that we just printed is mm -hmm. worth uh, and it has a certain value yeah so with Bitcoin when the community starts to accept it then it's money also yeah that's the best way to start what is money is a very deep question. I think most people in the world don't understand it. They mm. think they know what it is, but you really have to go down that rabbit hole and deep, dig deep to find out what money really is. And when you find out that the Fed owns the US dollar, not even the US government, you're like, hmm, because that's also a private owned company. Yes. And the U US government has to pay the Fed taxes on the money that they use mm -hmm. from the Fed. So that's, that's also uh, weird because it's actually the same story as Ethereum then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Vitalik is a new fed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, it has been an honor to meet you guys. Uh, I'm going to talk to Maya so she can start educating the people. She's our local content. All right. She's been pushing for Bitcoin for, I think, the last five years. But eight years, sorry. Sorry, relax, relax. Don't bite me. <laughs> <laughs> you also have a guy named Gabriel who's really Gabriel good Santos. too. Yeah, 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 He's yeah, a star, yeah. upcoming star. <laughs> so uh, I think that's going to be their job soon. And uh, i really like to thank you guys for coming. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, it's man. been a pleasure. Okay. Mensen, dit was een andere tori. Sowieso wil ik Optic Instyle bedanken. Of Instyle Optics. Sorry, ik moest even switchen naar Nederlands. Dus is een beetje moeilijk voor deze mogelijkheid. Ik heb deze bril van ze genakt en ze kregen het nooit meer terug. Dat weten jullie. En uh, tot de volgende keer. Later. Hi, dankjewel dat jullie hebben gekeken naar het programma. En als jullie hebben genoten, ga alsjeblieft naar onze YouTube channel. Share, subscribe, like die tori. We zijn op Facebook, we hebben onze eigen website nu. Uh, www.thedavepodcast.com Mocht het zijn dat je wil opgeven, omdat je een verhaal wil doen, dan kan je daar opgeven. En uh, tot de volgende keer. D-V-A, baby. Let's talk.